Hey guys, today I just want to take you through um, Star Control 2, which is one of my favourite classic science fiction games. going to move the mouse off screen because you don't use it for this one. This can be available for free on SourceForge, um, which you can download and play at your leisure whenever you want. It's an amazing game and I highly recommend it. I'm not very good at it, but that's the thing. I'm not very good at anything. Right, now I'm going to skip through the opening uh, and just tell you a little bit about what's happened. Um, so, you start off in this starship and uh, you're investigating our soul system, the solar system which human life came from, because we have lost contact with, um, we've lost contact with Earth. Now, this thing at the bottom of the screen is the starship Vindicator, and um, I'm going to the blue planet, obviously. Uh, if you're unsure about where um, the Blue Planet is at this time of recording, you're probably on it whilst you're watching this video. So, um, we're going to find out what's happened to Earth. <laughs> now, the maps are really, really good, and the fact that you can sort of zoom in and out of them um, as you get closer, this is a really, really well put together classic game. Um, Fred Fallen, Paul Ritchie, I believe it's pronounced, the third did an amazing job. So anyway, we have got this weird thing coming to us. Attention, interloper. Heed this recorded message. This drone vessel Hello. speaks with the voice and authority of Urquan. You are trespassing within Urquan space. This world, Earth, may not be approached for any reason. Nor will hostilities against our orbital platform be tolerated. In addition, your ship does not respond to standard hierarchy identification transmissions and is therefore deemed to be independent. This is not permissible. Only subservience shall be tolerated. This drone now leaves to inform the Urquan of your transgressions. You are commanded to remain here and await the arrival of the Urquan. Disobedience will be punished. Now, I really love this guy's voice. Um, it's something uh, like speaking backwards, so... So you speak like this? Almost, and uh, it's just really, really sort of cool. Uh, whoever did that probably really hurt their uh, throat. But um, I showed video of him talking um, and doing a monologue to my son when he was really young, and he used to, my son used to laugh and laugh at them. Anyway, so, I'm going to the uh, Starbase here. Attention unidentified space vessel. I am Starbase Commander Hayes of the slave planet Earth. Our hyperwave broadcast is extremely weak. Situation critical. Energy cores exhausted. Scanners and deep radar are non-functional. We cannot identify your vessel. Are you the scheduled hierarchy resupply ship? Well, Repeat, the... are you the resupply <sighs> vessel? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Commander Hayes. Uh, basically, um, the Urquan mentioned the hierarchy, so I don't think uh, we, we are with them. Um, so, Slave Planet, Hierarchy Resupply Vessel, what's going on here? Look, I don't know who you are or why you're here, but right now the only thing I'm worried about is saving the lives of 1,900 men and women aboard this starbase, and right now you're our only hope. I can't keep the transmitter on too much longer. We need the power for heat and air, so if you don't have any radioactives on board your vessel, please get some and bring them back here before it's too late. Right. We'll leave now to find the elements you require. So I've got to find out really where the they are. The best way to get radioactives in this system would be to land on Mercury and scour the surface for deposits of radioactive elements. But be careful. Mercury is a pretty inhospitable place. Watch out for earthquakes and those high temperature areas. Thanks, I'll make sure to mention this the next time I talk with our masters. I'm sure they will reward you. Right, so... This guy is... He, 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 Commander Hayes is a cool dude. Um, he... He's basically... Um, 
He values the lives of the people that he works with. He's actually a much better uh, commander um, than a large amount of uh, people in science fiction, which is pretty cool, to be honest. Right, so Mercury is the um, little orange planet, the closest to the sun, although that has been called into question several times uh, by people recently. So, right. Entering planetary orbit. Now, this is the thing which I really like about the game. You have, and this is this was really complicated for um, Paul Ritchie and Fred Ford to to design. I mean, the way that they sort of created this 3D appearance in um, a 2D game is absolutely astounding, because there had really been very little like it um, before Star Control. This is one of the first instances of anything interesting like this. So, I'm going to scan. Right, so I'm going to do a mineral scan. This is really cool. So, it gives us information on the orbit, the type of atmosphere, the temperature, the weather, the tectonics, um, which is kind of the dangerous level of the planet. The 3 is pretty dangerous, but it's not too bad. Um, mass, radius, gravity, things like that. It is so cool that they've got all this information. And we can scan for energy on the plan. Right, nothing like no sort of power plants or anything on Mercury. Biological. No life on Mercury. This is really cool. Um, I mean, it's my favorite. Exploring planets is probably the coolest part. Now we can drop a dispatch craft, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop it down near the resources. I mean, how much control do you get like this? So I've got to avoid the flames. Oh my god. Okay. I can pull up with the escape key. I want to dispatch again. Because I want to gather quite a bit of resources, but I can only get pick up so much. Right. It's actually very, very dangerous, um, like mining a planet like Mercury. Because the, 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 my, uh, I am losing crew. I'm down to 33 crew on my main starship. I mean, they can have 10 on 10 crew on one of these crafts, which is really bad because we, we, we don't want to lose a lot of people. Right, so I'm going to pull up. Uh, and the thing is, it's, it would be far too easy if I could just pick up everything in one go, and that's a big problem with a lot of modern games. There are no limits on this kind of stuff, which means that I could just run around pretty much risk-free and not have to worry about anything. I'm gonna... Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna dispatch again. I, I, I need to pick up all of these resources. Just do it properly and take this. The good thing is though, I can tactically put my craft down near the resources so I don't take so many... Um, <clears throat> I don't take so many risks when I'm on the planet. So there we go. Mercury has been completely mined for all resources. And so I'll go to exit menu. Um, and I'll go to navigate. Okay, there we go. So I've got the resources from Mercury. And I'm going to head back towards Commander Hayes in the Starbase. Hopefully everything will be alright. Now, I love the music in this game. That's one of the reasons it's so high. Because it's I want you guys to appreciate it. Um, right. No, 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 no. Maneuverability. My maneuverability is terrible. Uh, that This does get improved upon uh, later on. It also doesn't help that I'm an idiot and I can't pilot anything. This is one of the reasons I don't drive. You know. Let's see. Anyway, this is this is pretty much the end of the first mission. I, I I've come back with radioactives and resources. And there we go. 
Did you find Finally, any radioactive radio elements for our power cores? Right. Right, so I've got several options. The fine one, where we're going to help. What will you give us in exchange for radioactives? They're not going to have much, I don't think. Before you help, you help you. We require certain information. That'd be cool. But I want to be positive and help the humans. We're initiating transfer of radioactives, Captain. Now, as soon as our engineers can refit the energy cores, there, that's Way. much better. Power ratings are climbing. Life support is coming back into the green. Deep radar systems and sensors are now online. And the thing I is, he's going to give me information anyway. What the hell kind of Captain. ship is that? It's my who ship. Who are you, Captain? Well, you've been rescued by the walrus. Uh, unfortunately, in this game, my name is Captain Zelnik. We are the survivors of a star control science research team, the Fela Star System. Star control science mission, huh? <laughs> Captain, I served as a star control officer during the war aboard several cruisers in the Corward Front. And if there'd been any scientific mission to Vela, I would have heard about it. Well, no, <laughs> you wouldn't. I... Hmm. You know, come to think of it, there were some rumors that Corridor 9, the Special Operations Division of Star Control, was directing some hush-hush operation near Andresynth Space. The Vela Star System. Yes, that would be the right direction. So, Captain, if you say it's true, how do you explain that huge alien starship you're flying? It's not and the size... Here? <laughs> it's not the what size of the alien us? starship, it's how effective it is. Right. <clears throat> We want to bring the secrets of the precursors. Ah, fight the Urquan. Win back our freedom. I remember having such thoughts myself once, a long time ago. That was in the first years after the defeat, when it was still terrifying to look up and see the bloody glow of the pulsating slave shield overhead. He said bloody. But I know it's not in that context, but still. The impenetrable wall, as though the sheer power of our hatred would pull it down. But over the years, I spent so much of my time struggling down on the surface, under the shield, and then later up here trying to keep the station alive, that I'd forgotten what it means to be free, to hate our Urquan masters. And now here you are, in an alien ship of unknown power, offering me your assistance to fight against the hierarchy again after all these years. Captain, your offer is intriguing. So be it's intrigued tempting by tempting to it. think that with your advanced precursor technology, we can somehow crack the Earth's slave shield and reassemble the Alliance to attack the Hierarchy. And this time, win the damn war. Well, he Consider said damn. The consequences if he, he's really fail. killing it. The Urquan won't <laughs> just punish us here on the station. They'll exact a gruesome retribution on the surface below as well. Before I commit this station to helping you attack the Urquan and accepting the risk of annihilation if we are defeated, I have to make sure that you and your ship have what it takes to oppose the Hierarchy. We got what it takes. I'll make you a deal. If you can eliminate the alien base on the moon and get rid of that threat at least, I will seriously consider your offer. So you should. Alright, what details can you give us? After the Urquan <clears throat> erected the slave shield around the Earth and established this space station, they decided to leave a contingent of combat ships close to the Earth to keep watch on our planet and confirm that they were obeying the Urquan slave laws. I'm certain they're still out there on the surface of the moon because we can pick up a constant stream of alien broadcasts. Right. <clears throat> Be careful, Captain. There are probably a dozen Spathy eluders and Illrath Avengers down there on the lunar surface. I don't know why they haven't come after you yet, but when they do, you'd better have your weapons armed and your thrusters burning hot. Okay, so this is a serious threat. Um... Now, if you may have noticed, but my crew has been restocked, which is good. Um, so, I need to go to the moon, and I need to take this um, I need to take this base out. <clears throat> right. So, this is the moon. I'm gonna scan it. Look for minerals. Plenty of minerals. Biological life. Right. There's life on the moon. This is unusual energy right that energy point that is where our base is and this is why it's so useful to have this kind of scanning stuff so I mean this is this game is really old the amount of time and energy put into it is amazing 
now. <clears throat> so I'm going to be very careful about... Okay, there's little drone things there. I'm not going to go to the base directly yet. Right, so my return key is my firing key. Right, I can destroy those. No, um, no death gra uh, graphics for them, but I don't really expect that. Um, these, I don't know exactly what these are, but they seem to be. Uh, Vehicles. All oh, right. I'm just gonna pull up for a second. Right, dispatch. All right. It's important that I annihilate all possible threats to um, the human race out here. Oh my God, no. Um, see that—that's the problem with. Um, Having what I got, it's uh, my inability to get the right keys. It makes life really, really hard sometimes. Actually, I can't go over the top, but I can scroll through on the bottom, which is great. I mean, this is so cool, and just in terms of the sheer amount of effort that's been put in. Um, but yeah, it's the return key to fire anyway. We're going to go to the main base. Report from surface. <clears throat> we have discovered an alien base and have explored its interior. The installation must have been abandoned many years ago, but a great care is taken to make it appear active. Life support systems are functional. Fusion generators are at full output and robotic construction vehicles have been programmed to room the lunar surface, bulldozing moon dust into random piles. Interesting, that's, so they, that's what they were. In addition, we have found the installment of a hyperwave locked in the transmit mode, endlessly playing the same alien recordings. Although we can't translate the message, our Xenotech ensign Rigby believes that the message is some kind of alert or mayday broadcast. The base is filled with useful materials and equipment. We will scavenge as much as we can and bring it aboard immediately. End of report. Right, that's cool. So, I want to exit the menu and I want to go to navigate. And we're going to get this information back to Commander Hayes and then we'll call it for uh, call it for a while. Have you dealt with the base yet? <clears throat> we found the base, but it was a uh, Ah. We did destroy the enemy, so You fought them, Captain? <laughs> I hope you didn't suffer serious casualties. Um It was too horrible for words. I just can't talk about it I'm right sure now. I'm sure the experience this is exactly is what I would Captain, do. Captain, listen closely. Long-range sensors show a ship closing on this oh, station no. fast. Oh no! My lies are going to be showed up. As Ilrath, Avenger class. I think you've got a fight on your hands, Captain. Right. Your best bet is to wait until you have point-blank range. Captain, it's jamming our signal. Right, now the Ilrath are really problematic. By the fetid breath of the Dark Twin, Kazan, a human and an alien starship. How fascinating. When I intercepted that Urquan drone and learned that an unidentified starship had approached Earth, uh, I never expected to find such a remarkable vehicle in the hands of a human. Humans are prey animals. He knows us so well. Helpless. But here is a human in an armed starship. And therefore in direct violation of the oath of fealty. I am sure our masters, the Orquan, will punish Earth most severely for this treachery. When I present them with the twisted wreckage of your ship and your many charred corpses. Uh, he, he reminds me of my ex. Um, <clears throat> no, he's not ugly. He's not, most spiders are, but he's quite good looking for his species. Um, I, 
I'll, I'll do the um, I'll do the Star Trek thing. Um, look, let's be reasonable. We can coexist peacefully. <laughs> You must be either a naive child or a hopeless fool. I am both human. It it's no not difference. even a human, it's a... Because Ilrath, yes. You will be dead. Right. I'm going to shoot out my... Um... Ah, Trent is the captain of um, this ship. So I'm going to use it first against uh, my enemy. Right. Thing is, I know I can rely on the Earth. Seen an Avenger blown away like that since the battle in Draco. I guess you've shown that you can handle yourself in battle, Captain. And she was so Captain my last Trent. Reservation about me. helping you has been dissolved. I will commit the station to helping free Earth and defeat the Urquan. Thanks. We may get our atoms rearranged in the process, but by God, Captain, we're going to try. So the obvious first step is to get the precursor equipment and software over here so that we can make it work with our ship repair fabricators. But then what, Captain? We will slowly build our strength, unify an allied starship, Starfleet, and bring the Urquan to their knee equivalent. A sensible plan, Captain. Let's get to work. It's so sensible I couldn't come way, up with Captain, it myself. I think we need a name for this new alliance we're going to forge. Right. And since it was your idea, it's only fair that you get the honor of naming it. So, what will it be? <laughs> the new alliance of free stars, the concordance of alien nations, the United Federation of Worlds. Right, new alliance of free stars is pretty cool. Um, the United Federation of Worlds sounds pretty cool. Empire of Selling. Now, if my name was Warus, I would go with that, but... Nah. United Federation of Worlds. That has a familiar ring to it. Nonetheless, we'll make it so. The United <laughs> Federation <laughs> Reference. of Worlds. Now, Captain, I expect the configuration process for the Starbase to take at least two weeks, See, they so really let's thought get of everything. to work. That's why this is one of the coolest games possibly ever that's been released. I have good news to report, Captain. We have successfully integrated right. the precursor technology from your ship into our fabricator system, and as you can see, we've already begun minor repairs on your ship, patching up some of the micrometeorite holes. We noticed that your nice. ship does not have an emergency warp escape unit, so our engineers rigged up some for you and each of your escorts. Now, Thanks. you should be able to escape from a bad situation with the touch of a button. But there is a cost, however. The unit gulps up five fuel units each time your precursor ship uses it. Yeah, my also, we now have a limited capacity now. to make modifications to your ship, to refine starship fuel, to build additional combat ships, and to train new members of your crew for the flagship and any ships you acquire for your fleet. Captain, I know you're eager to get to work, so I'll be brief. If you have any questions how this starbase works, what resources we need, or just some background information on the galaxy, don't hesitate to ask. Well, the galaxy's a big place, um, so I'll give him my minerals. So all of my excess. Not a bad job, Captain. Well, thanks. Goodbye, we'll Captain. for me, Captain. Sure will, buddy. Right. So I'm just gonna go through the outfit, just show you a little bit about that. So in terms of fuel. I need, I'm going to need fuel, so I'm going to up that to 20. Um, I'm going to go to game, and I'm going to save the game. There. Just make sure that that's saved. Yes, there we go. And uh, I think we'll call it for now. Anyway, that's the beginning of um, the Urquan Masters, and um, hopefully we're going to be playing more of this soon. Catch you later. Bye-bye.